Today we've got an entitled parent story of a mom who lost their license and just expects others to drive her around. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, dad won't let me move out. So I'm planning on moving out and moving in with one of my friends. I'm not going to stay here because my dad is a control freak and mentally abusive. Whole other story. He said when I move out, I can't bring one thing from my room with me because anything in his house he owns, including clothes, gifts from family members, etc. My dad also said when my friend comes to pick me up, he's going to beat his butt. Can I legally bring some of my stuff with me or am I screwed? I would definitely involve the police in this situation, especially considering they're threatening to beat somebody up. You might be able to get in touch with somebody who might be able to, I don't know, middleman this kind of thing, oversee a peaceful transfer out of that place. This next story is entitled parent upset because their kid won't sleep without visiting our cats every day and we said no. Our neighbors, who live in the same house, have a three-year-old son and we have three indoor cats. One day the father knocked on the door, telling us his son lately grew fond of cats, and if it was possible that his son can see our cats. We let them in, but it turned out the boy still has two left hands when it comes to animals, and his father doesn't interfere when the kid chases them, screeches at them like a siren, pulls on their tails and throws hard toys at them. As you can guess, we weren't too pleased. Next day, same time in the evening, father and kid knock on our door. The father demanding that his son can meet the meow meows again. This time my husband opened the door and was somewhat surprised by them requesting a visit again. Blindsided let them in again. Same procedure as the day before. A solid half hour of screeching and chasing the scared and startled cats. Day 3, we just sat down for dinner. The father knocks on our door, letting us know that it's his son's bedtime and that he's ready to play with his meow meows. I kindly but clearly explained that we're just about to have dinner and that we cannot make this a daily play date because our cats are not happy about this, as they're not used to children and one of them is blind. I told them it's too much for the animals. My husband and I are working full time and our evenings, having dinner together, is our relaxed time and we would like to spend alone. The following two hours we heard the kids screaming his head off demanding to meet his meow meows followed by furious knocking on our door, which we opened, to our very angered neighbor, pointing on his son's blue from crying face, yelling at us, saying that this sad face should make us think about the consequences of decisions we make for other people. His son won't sleep anymore without seeing his beloved meow meows. Yes, he seriously kept using this term and also the possessive adjective. I try to solve this in a civilized manner, by keeping calm, but pointing out that it wasn't our idea to make seeing our cats his son's getting ready to sleep ritual and that he cannot expect from us to make this a daily schedule. But we were marked as general child haters already. Two days later, our landlord called us to remind us to please not let our cats out in the hallway because the neighbor's child is allergic to cats. I would make sure I told the landlord exactly what was going on. And honestly, if there was any shred of doubt from that landlord, if you have any kind of camera, I would be like, listen, I've got the footage to back it up too. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, Entitled Mother is mad at us for not giving our bikes to her nice kid, and yells at us when he burns his feet. Disclaimer, I was only 6 at the time of the story, 2015, July or August, so not everything is going to be exact because I don't remember it all. Also, this takes place in Denmark, so some things might be slightly mistranslated. Short context, in 2015, my family decided to move across the street to a bigger and better house. Newly built on land that we had bought from our now neighbors, they own a farm, the house building was as usual as it gets, and I was going to start school about two weeks from the time of this story. For my sixth birthday that year, I got my first ever bicycle, which six-year-old me treasured like gold. I loved it, despite me having some difficulties learning to ride it. Anyways, on to the story. On the day of the story, my brothers and my dad went over to our soon-to-be house, where the flooring had just been done, and where they were about to begin making walls. My dad had decided it would be fun to make a weekend out of cycling around on the floor of our now house. So we brought our bikes over and began to bike around for fun. I loved it and found it fun to try and avoid steering off the floor and onto the sand below, 
which six-year-old me decided to imagine as lava. At first, all was well. We rode around on the floor, being semi-loud as kids are when having fun. However, one of the families a bit down the street noticed the noise, and there comes Entitled Mother and Nice Kid. Entitled Mother starts with a typical Karen-like, Hi, um, excuse me, to my dad who was just looking over us and making sure we weren't getting hurt. My dad, 40-year-old male, turns around, greets the Karen and says, Can I help you? Entitled Mother then starts rambling on about how we were being super loud and how they were trying to enjoy the nice weather outside. To which I will give her credit, it was pretty nice weather for our area. My dad tries to calmly explain that we're riding around on our bikes and just playing, having fun, all that stuff. Entitled Mother is of course not satisfied with this and demanded that we stop being so loud. My dad calls us over and tells us to try and turn it down a bit, which I didn't exactly understand, but I tried my best, failing pretty horribly at it. As soon as I and my brothers turned around and to start writing again, the nice kid says, Mommy, it's not a big deal. To which Entitled Mother looks at him, then my dad, and asks, Can my son have your bike? He wants to ride around here too. My dad was of course slightly confused, but decides to stay calm and explain that we kids are using our bikes and that he can join if he has his own. Nice Kid tells his mom again to just leave it be and asks to go back home. But Entitled Mother insists that Nice Kid needs to have a bike right now and that it has to be one of ours. The Nice Kid starts to look slightly fascinated by our riding around and decides to step onto the floor just to get a better view, but sadly he was walking in bare feet and the concrete floor had been beamed by the sun the whole day, which led to be hot and Nice Kid to burn his feet, or something like that. My two older brothers rode over to Nice Kid to ask if he's okay. Six-year-old me follows, but doesn't do much. Nice Kid is almost crying because it hurt on his bare feet to step on the hot concrete. Entitled Mother decides to use this as an excuse to demand we now give one of our bikes to her. For Nice Kid to use, but Nice Kid is helped off the concrete by my brothers, stands up and asks his mom if they can just leave now. Entitled Mother is still very angry that her son got hurt and tries one more time to get a bike from us, but Nice Kid just pulls on her dress and begs to just go back home. Entitled Mother listens to her son, finally, and leaves. I and my brothers continue to ride our bikes, and my dad continues to just watch us. So other than that, it was really fun to ride around on my bike on the floor of the house without walls. 10 out of 10, would recommend. If you want a neighborhood that is just peace and quiet, you better find some like adult only place. During a perfectly beautiful day, you don't even have room to complain about noise. I mean, you can try go filing a noise complaint, but who's going to go to somebody's house during the daylight hours and be like, no sir, your kids are having too much fun. Our next story is, my parents are my landlords. Hi everyone, so this is about my own parents. So in 2021, our old landlords evicted us because they wanted to move into the house. They didn't and rented it for double the price. Anyways, so since my parents had a second house, and we exhausted our efforts to find a place within budget, they offered us to live in the first house. First six months was free to get us back on our feet, and then we'd pay rent. Originally, they wanted $700 plus power, but we negotiated to $1,000 including power because they didn't want to charge it from their name anyways. Power was only $150 a month, so a deal for them. The other deal was anything we broke, we replaced. Oh, and my husband's mother wasn't allowed on property due to some bad blood. Everything was fine till they suddenly raised the rent to $1,000 plus power. Okay, not terrible, but we can manage. Recently, my parents stopped by for a surprise visit. And now my mother is staring into me for not wiping my kids' fingerprints off stuff, not dusting and not sweeping. I'll be honest that the first two we don't do as much as we should, but the sweeping we do constantly, as both my kids are autistic with learning disabilities and don't understand when we try to tell them to not throw food on the floor. Everything else was perfect. Dishes done, no clutter on the floor, etc. We replaced their 10-year-old coffee machine that suddenly broke. Not our fault, but whatever. Their 33-year-old well pump broke. 
They did replace that themselves because they knew it was old. Then their lawn motor battery died. Shocker, because it was also old. We were waiting till payday to afford to get a new one, and they're upset about us never replacing anything. We have the option to buy the house whenever we can qualify for a mortgage, and we plan to, but they're being so... I don't know. Am I actually the entitled parent? Because they're now saying I am. Definitely not. I think these parents are being overbearing and judgmental, and also they kind of jacked that rent up on you pretty darn good, and you just kind of rolled with it. Our next story is, parents more concerned about losing a free dog sitter rather than supporting their daughter. Heard this story yesterday and I'm still angry. For some context, our parents came into some money relatively recently, so have taken the opportunity to explore the world. They've been away two out of three times already this year, with a couple more booked later in the year. Since my sister, 20-year-old female, and I, 23-year-old female, don't live at home, me renting with my partner, sister at university, I understand that they're taking the chance to go away and enjoy themselves. The issue comes in the fact that they book these trips spontaneously and expect me or my sister to drop any plans we have at the last minute to look after their two-year-old puppy. Issue, my sister has recently finished her second year of university and is working as much as she can to save up for her next term. She lives an hour away by train and with recent strikes, it can be difficult to come home. Last week, she applied for a second job to earn as much money as possible over the summer. Anybody in the UK knows how hard it is at the minute. She told me yesterday that she was successful and is due to start at the end of the month. I was very happy for her and started making plans to go up and see her. Gotta abuse those discounts. Our parents weren't as enthusiastic. Instead of congratulating her, the first words out of their mouths was, Who's going to look after our dog when we go away? I got so angry. They've become so selfish since they've come into this money. They don't even cover the rail funds for my sister to come home. They think they can exploit her to dog sit for free. Whilst this may not be the most entitled situation compared to what I've seen on the sub, I needed to rant. I think it goes without saying that if they can afford to have multiple spontaneous vacations throughout the year, they can afford to pay to have somebody dog sit their dog. Unless like they're paying literally all they can just for the vacations and they have nothing left over for the year, but I greatly doubt that. Our next story is entitled aunt to dad, why hasn't she answered my questions? Dad, maybe because you haven't asked her? Title pretty much says it all. My entitled aunt asked my father, not me, why I haven't called to answer her questions yet. Questions? What questions? I'm not a mind reader. Call me, text me, ask me in person. Don't ponder aloud to my father as to why I haven't called to answer your questions that I've never heard of before. And don't get upset with me that I haven't had time to call you and talk for two hours before you ask your questions. For context, I'm getting married this month. We're in the home stretch. I have tons of last minute things to do. Work is insane, as is life in general. I don't have time for a long phone call or the energy to deal with you passive aggressively asking my dad things that you can easily ask me directly. This isn't the first time this has happened and it won't be the last. She hasn't said it, but I know she wanted to be included in more wedding conversations, be treated like a mom, be included in every conversation. But she's not my mom and she doesn't deserve to assume that position in my wedding. Not after everything she's done. I try to include her in the conversations, but she would cancel via my dad. She didn't even tell me that she couldn't see the venue or what her hotel accommodations were. I'm not sure if this is right for this group, but after my dad told me this, I had to tell someone. These next few weeks are going to be rough. Honestly, I think OP should put their foot down, distance themselves from her, and straight up iterate that to their dad. Say to their dad, listen, if you want to support me right now, you have to understand that I want my distance from Entitled Ant. This next story is the time Justice got caught destroying stuff and his mom made everything worse. I just saw a video and was reminded of an event from my childhood. I think it qualifies as an entitled parent story, but it might also just be an insane parent story. This must have been when I was like 12 years old, so some details are spotty, and most of it has been filled in secondhand by my mom years later. There was a kid who lived in the same condo complex, or whatever it's called, where I lived for a while as a kid. 
I always thought the kid was an insufferable jerk, but my stepbrother was friends with the guy. The English translation of his name was, and I am not kidding, Justice. Justice constantly did dumb crap, to the point where he got expelled from the school and had to go to a different school further away. I don't recall what he did to get expelled, but in our country, you have to do something seriously bad for that to happen. However, it went down before my mom and I moved in with my stepdad, so my stepbrother used to go to school with him. Justice's mom was the classic, my son is angel type of mom who never punished him for anything. One night, Justice and some other kids went through every stairwell in our condo complex and unscrewed and took all the light bulbs. They got into the stairwells where they didn't live by calling random people on the door phone and claiming to be some innocent kid who forgot their keys and well-meaning strangers buzzed them through the door. They then brought all the bulbs into the forest and smashed them. Justice then bragged to my stepbrother about this. Now, my stepbrother was no angel by any means, but even he thought this level of destruction was a bit much, so he told our parents who in turn told the board of the HOA, or whatever the condo equivalent of an HOA is, who filed a police report for destruction of property. Justice's family was already on thin ice for a lot of crappy things that he and his mom had done. Stuff like not picking up after their dog, Justice once let the dog do his business in the stairwell as well, being loud and disturbing their neighbors, and some of their neighbors complained about a smell coming from their condo, More on that later. Justice also had several other cases where he had destroyed property, or was suspected to have destroyed property. A lot of people in the neighborhood also thought Justice's mom was a hoarder, but she never let anyone else in the condo, so nobody could tell for sure. But the part that was visible from the door was definitely cluttered. So needless to say, they were already bordering on being evicted when this happened, and this was the straw that broke the camel's back. So the board contacted a lawyer to do the groundwork for an eviction process, and they were annoyed about what a lengthy and frustrating process this was going to be. Evicting someone in our country is seriously hard. However, Justice's mom decided to make this easier for them. The board arranged an event where we were all going to work together and clean the area around the condo complex. Unfortunately, our family had a definitely real and not at all impromptu reason to go visit my grandparents for a few days. And this was totally planned months ago and couldn't be changed. So sadly we couldn't attend, but after what happened, I kind of wished we did. You see, Justice's mom, enraged by the fact that the board had filed a police report on her son, she didn't even know about the eviction yet, charged and attacked the chairwoman during the event. In broad daylight, and full view of pretty much everyone in the complex, aside from us. Justice's mom attacked the chairwoman while screaming like a mad woman that the chairwoman was a child hater, a monster, and that she deserved to die. Justice's mom tried to strangle the chairwoman, but was quickly restrained by the others. Police were called, and Justice's mom was arrested for assault. Thankfully, this helped speed up the eviction process considerably, Justice's mom ended up with a restraining order as well, so I guess you could say Justice's mom was served. What? You know darn well somebody in the comments would have made that pun if I hadn't. The last few days Justice and his mom had left in the condo, Justice talked often and loudly about how moving away was their choice, how everyone else in this town sucked and how much better the city they were moving to was. He insisted the place was so warm and nice that they had palm trees. I had been in that city and I easily informed him of the fact that this wasn't true. In fact, nowhere in our northern European country had palm trees. It was such a ridiculous claim to make. I don't know if his mom told him that or if he made that lie up himself. He kept insisting that it was true, however. As a bonus, when the eviction date passed, Justice and his mom still had not moved. The HOA waited for the mom to leave the condo and got a locksmith to open up the door and change the locks. Then they discovered two things. A. The rumors of Justice's mom being a hoarder was true. Her condo was cluttered with all kinds of junk that the HOA boxed up and moved to a storage unit. On Justice's mom's dime, of course. But more importantly, B. The condo was in a terrible condition. For one, it stank. 
It reeked of cat pee to the point where they must have let their cats, and probably their dog too, pee on the floor for years without doing anything about it or even trying to clean it. There was also mold and a ton of damage done to the apartment. Some of the damage done was probably made on purpose to punish the HOA, but some of it was probably just run-of-the-mill neglect. It took months of work to make the condo presentable again. They had to basically replace everything in there, including the floors and some of the inner walls. It was so bad, I'm pretty sure they had to do some work in the downstairs neighbor's ceiling as well to fix the damages. Looking back as an adult, I honestly feel a bit bad for Justice. He was indeed a jerk, but no wonder considering how his mom was. Nobody really suspected how bad it was for him. Usually you have this idea that if the parent is a hoarder, the kid will show signs of neglect. But Justice never looked neglected. His clothes were clean and he always looked fed. But it's pretty clear he acted out of the way he did to get attention from his mom. You could still be an okay mom and still be a terrible hoarder. It's definitely one of those situations that when you get 10 or 15 years removed from that situation and you look back on it, you definitely see these kids that almost certainly had a troubled childhood. And I think it's really normal to sympathize with these people who you once thought were the scum of the earth when you were a kid. Our next story is Graduation Grandma. My daughter graduated today from an online public school. As we were waiting to be allowed into the venue, Entitled Grandma had a large bouquet of balloons in the air. It was easily four feet across and at the perfect height to block people's view. I would have been really pissed if I'd been forced to sit behind her, so we intentionally headed in a different direction to sit. She sat there for about five minutes in a front seat before it started when an administrator called, went up to her and informed her that it was not allowed and it would be in the back of the room. It kills me how oblivious and entitled some people are. The people who are this oblivious, who reach the age of being a grandma while still being able to make those mistakes, it just makes you feel like, did you live your life on autopilot? Like, were you walking around in the 60s, 70s, 80s just mindless? Maybe something in those decades happened that caused that brainwave malfunction. Our next story is Summertime Joyride Through Three Cities. Hello people of Reddit, here's a wild story that is still going on, but to be on the safe side I'll release this information now, better safe than sorry. Mom is my mom, Mom 2 is my mom's girlfriend, Entitled Parent 1 is Mom 2's mom, Entitled Parent 2 is Mom 2's dad, and Entitled Parent 3 is Entitled Brother, Mom 2's brother. So in the past week, Entitled parents have committed the act of human trafficking. They sold Mom too, my mom's girlfriend. Mom managed to save her thanks to a not named friend. Mom has now received an unimaginable amount of fake bills and fake letters from even the police that the Entitled parents claim to be, claims that the case has been closed but there are no watermarks of any police station, no contact info, nothing. After mom managed to save mom too, they were chased through three cities all around the place. They had to wait at a police station parking lot for three hours until it was morning. Mom and mom too managed to get to home. After a bit, mom's house was broken into. First time, nothing was stolen, but we are suspecting that there's a tracking device somewhere in our car, as they seem to find mom and mom too absolutely everywhere where mom and mom too go. At one point, Mom and Mom 2 even got drugged and let's just say some awful stuff done to them. Next time Entitled Parents got into the house, they stole a lot of evidence that had been collected against them. Computers, phones, all Gmail and other accounts hacked including bank account. Entitled Parents have taken Mom's money as well. Police have been informed from all of this but so far nothing. I'll keep on sending updates on how this goes. As of right now, I've managed to get mom and mom too to a safe place. I can only hope that this ends well and soon. And for this to happen out of all places, it had to be Finland. Great start for summer. You're telling me this is all happening, you report this to the police and the police have done nothing? Somebody was almost sold, you're getting tracked and your house was broken into multiple times. And the police have done nothing? I definitely hope things get better for OP too. Our next story is, my child has autism. Your child also has crappy entitled parents. Review left for my local pharmacy. 
I'm not the person who left the review, I don't even have kids. 2 out of 5 stars, I've been a customer at the so and so location for a long time, and the pharmacy staff have always been very nice and helpful. I thought it was too good to be true, kind and helpful, and it was. Our daughter has autism and needs medication to help her fall asleep at night. I called the pharmacy at 8.38 p.m. to get a refill on her medication. We were just getting back into town when I realized that I left my daughter's meds at her grandmom's house two hours away. I explained my situation to the pharmacist and asked her if she could fill the prescription tonight because my daughter took it for sleep. But nope. She said very sarcastically, No, not tonight, but I will have it ready in the morning. Granted, it was 20 minutes till closing, but there were extenuating circumstances. It's now 20 after 11, and our precious daughter cannot relax and therefore cannot sleep. We're settling in for a sleepless night. We've also had to cancel an out-of-town appointment planned for tomorrow, all because the pharmacist would not go the extra mile for loyal customers. Not to mention for a sweet child. I'm very disappointed. As I said, the pharmacists at so-and-so location have always been super nice and helpful. I hope this one bad apple doesn't spoil the barrel. Well, I hear this post, and I hear the phrase, I hope this one bad apple doesn't spoil the barrel. And the one bad apple I hope that doesn't spoil the barrel is this entitled parent that wrote this, passing on their behavior to their kid. Our next story is, Crazy Mom Keeps Causing Drama. Where do I begin? About three days ago, my mom was helping me with my math homework. I was obviously annoyed. I was talking to her in a rude tone. I forgot if I talked to her in this tone since she yelled at me. But anyways, she started to yell at me for not knowing the answers to the problems, which irked me. So I definitely at that point was being rude to her because she deserves it. I don't remember if she hit me. She probably did because she does that all the time. But long story short, I went to play my piano and sniffed twice. I have a sniffing tick that my parents mock me of. Then my mom chased me around the house and eventually threw my iPhone 14 Pro onto the ground. Keep in mind, my mom has destroyed my iPad, my brother's iPad, damaged my laptop, my computer mouse, and threw my Apple Watch. She also smashes her phone at least once a month. Her phone is garbage because of the smashing. Anyways, I was very sad since it was relatively new and I have OCD. I got so mad, I took her phone and was so close to destroying it, but I controlled myself. This sent her into crazy mode, and she decided to rage war with the entire house for the next three hours. She screamed at me and my dad and threw soda and countless other things in her room. I was so sad, mad, hurt, confused, and stressed that I ran away. Then I came back and my dad kept forcing me to apologize to her for about two hours. I finally did, like I always do, and the drama stopped for the most part. Then today, my dad said something stupid about a restaurant he's never been at, saying that it's not good or something. Then my mom unsurprisingly slammed her phone into the table twice. Then I said, I feel bad for your phone. I realized I made a grave mistake. Then she said, what? Say that again. I said in a very low voice, I feel bad for your phone. Then she started going crazy saying that she wouldn't take me to the restaurant, throwing bowls and plates, yelling and saying, you had to get freaking, insert my name here, involved, like I'm absolutely done with her at that point. Then my dad said for me to apologize to my mom or he'd beat me up or punch me. I said if he did, I'd call the police and dared him to do it. He didn't and I ended up apologizing. And my mom acted like she was in the right and said that my first attempt wasn't sincere because it wasn't. Then she finally accepted the apology next and decided to talk crap about me later. I'm so mad, I don't know what to do. I feel bad for OP because honestly, considering the devices they mentioned, it sounds like at least financially they might be in a pretty nice scenario where you don't maybe necessarily want to get uprooted from that situation, but this kind of sounds like you need CPS all over it. This next story is, my mom lost her license, so I have to spend my days driving her around. She, 38 year old female, lost her license several months ago due to a DUI. About a week ago, she was arrested after being found driving again. They threatened to put her in jail for six months if she's found again. So for the past week, she's made me, 18-year-old female, drive her everywhere. 
which means four to five stops a day by her pill dealer's houses, all separate trips, according to my car, a hundred plus miles a day. I get home from one trip and she demands I take her again an hour or two later. I hate it, but I do it. I've made it clear I don't like it, but I try to keep my mouth shut and just get it over with. If I make a wrong turn accidentally, she goes off about how she doesn't understand how I could make such a mistake and questions my intelligence. She constantly fights with me about how miserable I am when driving and how I ruin everyone's day and about how driving her is the least I could do to contribute to the house, even though 95% of the errands I run are just her drug trips. I'm so sick of her crap. She's made her legal issues everyone's fault and responsibility but her own. You know I'm not supposed to be driving so don't make me go to jail. I spend every day ready to drop everything to cater to her and I still never do it right. I'm going off to college this fall and it can't come fast enough. I just don't think it's a great surprise if in this situation OP completely cuts their mom off. That mom will probably be left wondering and judging OP for the rest of her life while not even being able to reach out to OP. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.